Okay, today we're going to talk about branching. We've already done some branching with the uh, if statements and so forth. Uh, but what I wanted to do is uh, use the uh, uh, talk about some additional things here. Uh, we've got select statements. We've already used uh, data registers already uh, to uh, in terms of indexing and so forth. And then the if and select statements. So we've used the if statement already. We want to use a select statement today. Uh, and you've used the wait instructions already in terms of that you pick parts up and so forth to try to you know slow it down to let things stabilize before you pick parts up. But let's uh, let's just have a little review here <coughs> in terms of uh, what we cover. Okay, so in terms of unconditional branching, again, you know you branch to a label. Okay, whenever you change uh, program control, you're going to jump to a label, so you have to identify that point at which the program jumps to, and uh, you can put, you know, index numbers, so you bracket, split bracket, and index number one, two, three, four, five, etc. cetera, uh, right bracket. Okay, jump label is what obviously makes it go to the label, and the call, call was analogous to what did we say in other types of programming? Subroutine, exactly. So the call, uh, so these all move the uh, program counter, if you will, from just a sequential actuation, you know, one, two, three, four, et cetera, moving straight down the, the line, uh, it jumps it around, vectors it to a different location. So we have conditional branching based on Boolean expressions or integer expressions uh, or controlled by I.O. Okay, so again, the unconditional or, or something like jump label, okay, or call, that's unconditional, it's going to do that no matter what if that's in the program statement. Okay, so we'll go down. Again, the label will be talked. This is a syntax for label. Again, you've used it. So a label and then uh, the X operand here is either direct uh, or a label number indirect uh, where you're using register indirect addressing. We have not covered that uh, yet, but, uh, but we have used direct. And then as many as 16 numbers, this is a comment right here if you want to put that in there to help you understand what you were talking about or help the next person who looks at the program, what were you talking about? Okay, so it's just, this is the syntax. This would be a point, obviously. Uh, and then jump label number two. So it, in this particular case, the execution as it was going down here would automatically skip this second point and go down to label two. That's how the, how the, how the jump works. Now, uh, jump, label, uh, jump label here, uh, what we've shown here, okay, and I'll move this up just a little bit. Unconditional branch instruction versus conditional. What's an example of a conditional branch instruction that we've used already? What's an example of a, of a conditional? Uh, bracket three nine, bracket three nine. Uh, It'll go through up to three. What instruction did we use? Uh, yeah. Yeah. If. Exactly. That's a conditional branch based on the value of what of the of the value of the variable that's testing, right? But in this case, it's saying jump label one no matter what. That's an unconditional jump, okay? So unconditional branch instruction jumps to another location, excuse me, regardless of input or output. Two-part instruction, the jump, and then the, the label, obviously, instruction that jumps to. So this is a jump label one. So later on the program here in this green highlight it's label one difficult to see but that's what you have that's what it's going to go to so it'll skip around these you'll skip around these two instructions right here okay so if, if uh, digital input number one is off then uh, uh, if that's true then jump to this if it's false what does it go if it's false if this if digital input was on what would the next uh, line or what would the yeah would the next thing that the uh, a robot would do? What would it execute? Remember if it's false, if this is false, it just falls through and executes the next line and executes the next line. Then it's see label one, okay, you know, big deal. Uh, it doesn't really do anything and it goes to this point. Otherwise, if it, it's off, if this, uh, if um, instruction is true, then it's going to jump down to here. Okay, so just a quick uh, uh, overview of that. Okay, the call instruction, we've, we've done that. That's as we say subroutine. It says instruction to send a program flow out to a subprogram. When the call program finishes executing, it returns to the main program at the first instruction after the call instruction. So you could call, we were calling, you had, to, you had an, uh, a program to, to draw a block. 
to draw a, squ a square, excuse me, to draw a circle, uh, to draw a triangle or a rectangle, right? We had mm -hmm. three different geometric shapes. And we just simply called those. You had different programs. The call instruction was used to do that, just like we have in the example right here. Call program A, call program B, call program C. So this is your main program, right? This was the main program that you wrote to do that. And it was relatively short, compact. And then there's a bunch of code to program A. That would be like our square, right? Or like your square. Program B would be like your triangle. Program C would be like the rectangle, right? And that's what you did. So that was the way, I get that's unconditional branching, but